You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cricket Podcast, where we'll be talking India v Australia after a gripping day one of the second test. Australia are yet to be totally crushed. So we have hope that an engaging test match may yet play out. I'm Jack Hope and I'm joined today by senior editor at ESPN, Osman Samyuddin. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I, I may be a little bit more optimistic about Australia's prospects. I, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> we'll have to see yeah. how it turns out. Great. It's, uh, well, welcome to the show and, it, and it's great to have you. Um, uh, let's tee up the discussion by, by just doing first thoughts, I think. Uh, you know, obviously, Australia, they close their innings on 260-odd. India make it to the end of the day without losing a wicket. The pitch, it looks like it might deteriorate. Where, where do you see the game at the moment? You know, I think Australia may look back and think that they batted okay today. Um, you know, certainly better than than what they did the last time around. Um, you know, there, there was... I felt like there was there was a bit of turn early on in the pitch. There was a fair bit of turn early on, but it kind of slowed down as the day progressed. Although, you know, I was speaking to one of our writers out there, and and they reckon that there's probably more bounce in this Delhi pitch than you usually see in Delhi. Um, so so there is that, and there's a couple of balls you would have seen right at the end of the day in that last over that Nathan Lyon bowled to KL Rahul, which really kind of skidded through very low, didn't didn't get up at all. I reckon they would probably look back on this day, Australia, because, you know, they're the ones who kind of won the toss and, 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 and did the bidding. They'd probably look at it as a fairly decent day, um, I would imagine. I, I think, you know, Khwaja was obviously a good innings, a bit chancier, but Peter Hanscom was, was I think, the guy that really pulled that innings together into what it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'd, I'd broadly agree with that. I, I think at the end of the day, the, the host broadcaster did a who won what session map, didn't they? And they had it as two draws and, and one to India. But I, I think, bearing in mind the, the variable bounce we saw at the, at the end of the day, mm. it was probably probably closer to a, to a, a, a drawn day um, overall. Uh, if, we, if we look back through things and sort of do it in chronological order, if you like, uh, I, I thought Australia did, did bounce back pretty well. And, and I, I thought that their approach, or the approach they took certainly before lunch um, today, w- w- being slightly more positive, attacking you know, more, reg- uh, more regularly, um, is it, probably a plan that they can use, use more moving forward, would you say? Yeah, I, I reckon. I reckon, you know, that they've probably, you know, they've probably looked at just like, the weight of history uh, of their recent record in in India and the and the way they've batted and they've probably thought that you know if if there is any opportunity and you know maybe it's a little bit of basketball floating around in the air but you know they they've probably <laughs> thought that we should just just go harder you know what have you got to lose they've 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 been so poor on most of their tours of India apart from the last one where they were actually fairly competitive but you know they've they've been so poor and their batting has been so under the scanner and just so under. Just under like constant stress, you know, when you when you go out batting in India these days, like for, certainly for the last 10, 11, 12 years, I think it's probably the toughest, toughest place in the world right now to play your cricket in. Um, I would agree with that. Yeah. And, and maybe even like, you know, you could make a case that historically there's not been a tougher place to kind of travel to Australia at some stage, obviously were. Um, but like just just for pure batting, I don't think anywhere tests you like like India does right now. And and so I, I think they probably looked at that and you know Australia they've got a decent batting lineup. Let's be fair, you know they're probably a stronger batting lineup than they have been for a while actually. Um, if you go all the way down with you know Travis Head having had this wonderful summer, so I reckon they probably looked at all that and thought, well, you know, we're probably better off getting out attacking rather than just defending on the back foot. And you know the way Cummins batted towards the end of the day as well, and then Hanscom kind of took it on. I, I just feel like they probably thought let's let's get some more runs on the board, which is a, a completely logical thing to do, I think, in India. Let's get as many runs on the board as we can before we're inevitably going to be all out. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you, you, you've not stolen one of my points there, but like, I, I, it was it was something that kind of occurred to me as well. That um, it's certainly in the second innings of the the first test, they. They, they, I, I don't, I don't really know what their their game plan was, but I, I guess what ended up happening was that they, they, they sort of trusted their defensive technique, and it was quite poor, quite badly exposed. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, it wasn't easy to bat, and they were out of the game, so perhaps it mentally pitch, yeah. a little bit shot. But um, there were a lot of players out, neither on the front foot or the back foot, and um, that, that's not really where you want to be. I, I, I feel like 
if you if you make a decision to attack then perhaps what happens is that that, that you find yourselves in, in in better positions to play spin bowling more generally um i also think you know like to be honest having kawaja face 120 balls makes mm. a big difference for for australia he's he's probably 100%. their second best player of spin maybe the third best player of spin after smith and arguably arguably labashay Hans having him well by the way yeah well hans can play bad really well yeah, but having he's a good him, player of spin he's you know a proven yeah. good player of spin i reckon yeah but i i, I you know having a kawaja get a start makes a difference um i, I saw there was a, a tweet from crickfish which it's always nice when data backs this up uh, but uh, early in, I think before lunch, Australia were attacking 41% of the balls they faced versus 33% in the in the first test. So you can see either the Kawaja effect or just a different game plan um, really coming through there. Uh, things did take a bit of a turn, though, um, after after a positive start. Well, they 91 for one and then yeah. 108 for four. Ashwin, once again for India, um, the hero... Uh, or, or, or the guy making the breakthrough. Um, a real blow for Australia, that, wasn't it, to lose Labuschagne and then Smith in, in the same order. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and beautiful. I think both the dismissals just highlighted like the th- kind of threat that Ashwin brings, right? He is, you know, I mean, the, th- the unfortunate thing I find about Ashwin is that his, his home record is so, so legendary. It's so good that it kind of turns him into, like in the narrative, turns him into like a home track home track champion and not much but but his game away from home has improved immensely and I know like you know India still don't pick him in, in England for example but in Australia he's been vital to their last two successes and Australia is you know a country where off spinners go to die generally apart from Nathan Lyon um but you know I, I, so his he, he's so good at home that I think it overshadows the fact that he's just an, an all-time great anywhere he is in the world um and I and I think that over and the way he got where he beat Smith on the outside edge and Labuschagne on the inside edge, just just sums up like the challenge of facing Ashwin. You know, we call him an off spinner, but I feel like you know that 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 kind of genre for him is probably stretched to its to oh, its yeah. broadest point. Absolutely, I think he's he's got to be one of the most skillful bowlers to ever played the game. Uh, I think, uh, and that's you know, it sounds like hyperbole, but he's got no, 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 not fifty odd wickets. It's, it's, it's like I think the. The track record is there. I don't know if you saw um, the the images of the the seam positioning for the the two dismissals. Uh, the first with the yeah, I guess the more conventional forty five degree mm. angle on the on the on right, the delivery, right. which gets the ball to spin in towards leg stump, and then the second one um, more of a kind of like flying saucer, so it skids on past the outside edge. And, yeah, 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 and it's it's like the amount of work he must have put in to to being able to. And, and the position was like you know, that. If you read anything that he he says about the game, when when he talks about bowling, he like I find like he talks about bowling in a way that almost nobody talks about cricket anymore. Really, the kind of detail that he remembers, you know, it, he, I, I don't want to stereotype, but he he's almost like one of those you know those early early years kind of genius Indian scientists or mathematicians who used to like love and. And, and, and sit back and kind of go in awe of and think, oh my God, that guy's an absolute genius. Like Ashwin is at that level right now where he is one of those like, you know, genius mathematicians out of India. The way he talks about the game, the way he talks about, I, I, I think we did this interview maybe a few years back where he was talking about the different angles of sweep that, that, that Australia were deploying against him. And I think he was talking through a couple of Smith dismissals on the last tour to Australia, where if you remember, like he, he got him, I think four yeah. times in the first three tests of that series, maybe. Um, just the way he was talking about it, he has like he has a crazy memory, obviously, of how like batters play. And then not only does he have that memory, like you say, then he has the skill and the ability to work so hard that he can control these kind of things. So, you know, he can bowl that flying saucer ball, which just goes through with skids on. But he also has the traditional off spinner. And then he has like a, that, you know, that carom ball on good pitches turns like any Dusra would. Like honestly, yeah. it turns as much as a Dusra turns sometimes if, if if he gets it right. So to have all of that, to be able to do it like completely legally with his action, of course, um, it's just like yeah, you know, I, I think we'll only realize it's going to be one of those things where once he's gone, will India kind of realize, you know, what what an absolute like he, he's an all timer. Like I, I I've seen Kumble bowl, I've seen Harbhajan bowl. <sighs> I don't think he lacks in anything uh, against either of them in any comparison. And and you would say that, you know, he, he will be remembered as the greatest Indian spinner of all time. 
Um, once yeah, got- I mean, there's no argument from me there. I, th- I think there's just a control over everything he does as well. It's not, they're not just random variations. You see some guys on, on the T20 circuit, for example, who have a carom ball, but you know what's the what's the margin for error with that delivery yeah. it's quite quite substantial for a lot of them yeah. um doesn't 100%. seem like that for ashford it seems like he kind of knows where it's going it doesn't um, you know, and we're talking about the stuff that he does with the seam and stuff but then if you consider like the amount of drift he sometimes conjures up and the, and the dip that he gets on his deliveries like all these things with, you know, with changed actions as well and the angles that he attacks you from i don't think there's been like you know i'm, I'm thinking like he's He's up there at like morally worn levels in, in the number of things that he throws at a batter that they have to consider. And your yeah. modern batting, of course, it's a different game. Like every every great marks their own era and you don't really like comparing across across eras and stuff. But if you, if you look at the challenges that a modern batter faces in this game today, I don't think uh, anything tops facing R. Ashwin at home in India. Like there, there's no challenge that tops that for a batter in world cricket. Yeah, and he, and he made a huge difference today, as he uh, as we as we were saying, picks up Smith and Labuschagne. But Australia, they did you know they did rebuild Hanscom, finishing not out after well, I think was he was out off a no ball, but yes, <laughs> according to the rules, that is not out. So yeah, um, yeah. um two hundred sixty three is what they end up with, and then uh, India negotiate a tricky, a tricky little spell uh, at the end of the day. Um, what kind of stood out to me. Oh, no, maybe not what's not what not what stood out, but a couple more talking points from from Australia's point of view. Uh, the introduction of Kuhneman to the squad mm. and then international cricket. Um, I, I thought he bowled pretty well in the evening, and I think tomorrow he'll have a you know, understatement, but a, a crucial part to play. <laughs> Yeah. If um, if if Australia are going to to put put India in a spot of bother, what did you make of him after five overs of of the eye test? I, I think he was pretty good. I, I like you like you. I thought he you know I, I guess with 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 the slow left arm spinner, the the key thing is like the control because you know there's there's not like a huge amount of tricks that you have up your sleeve. You you do have some, but not a huge amount. And I think somebody like Jadeja, you know, the key to Jadeja has always been how accurate he is. He doesn't waste a single ball in his spell. It seems like anymore, although. Having said that, today he was a little bit more wasteful than he usually is. But, you know, uh, Kuruman, there was some decent control there. There will be turn. You will get turned in India. So, you know, it, it's, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I just feel like the broader question is about Australia's selection again. I, I just, I don't know, three spinners and just the one pacer. I, I guess I guess they've reasoned that, you know, the pacers are going to bowl, even if they had two pacers. What, you'll get maybe 20, 25 overs between them on the first day? Uh, Cummins can probably bowl 17, 18 by himself anyway on on you know on a day in a day's cricket, but I just feel like could they have maybe played like they're falling into that old trap of like overthinking things and you know stacking the side of spinners. You still need some good bowlers and like Australia have got a I know they're you know they're hurt by injuries and stuff and and, and Stark and Green not being fit and Hazelwood not being fit. Those are big blows. But I I just like to see Australia back in their strengths a little bit more. I don't know how you felt about the selection. Um, I I'm, I think it's a, a, a bit of a gamble that might have paid off. Um, okay. I, I, I think had they been asked to bowl first, then I I think it would have been a little bit tricky. And to, to be fair to Australia, they'd survived a fairly difficult spell, um, relatively unscathed before lunch. Siraj, I, th- yeah. I thought, thought actually bowled Super. very well. Um, yeah. So... Uh, had it been just Cummins at that point in the game, I think India would have been pretty happy um, with the pitch, maybe slightly breaking up and we'll maybe do pitch watch before, before we mm. wrap up on, on, on the podcast. Uh, maybe they'll be happy with that now. And with 260 on the board, there, there may be a, a few runs short of a, of a perfectly par score. I, I just feel um, like sometimes like teams fall into the strap when they come into India of like, okay, we've got to go big with spin, even if like those resources are not necessarily a hundred percent there. And yeah, you know, like England, the last team to have won there did it perfectly well that year because they didn't go crazy with it. You know, they had Swan and Panasar and, and Monty and they were good spinners. They were both yeah. good spinners at that time. So, you know, it, 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 fe- it fell well for them. The team before that, uh, I guess if you don't, if you take out like Dale Stain, they'll stay insides who have won tests in India. But, you know, the, the Australia team that won back in 04, you know, they, they relied on on Gillespie, McGraw and Kasparovic with, you know, Warren holding up one end. I, I just feel like 
if you have bowlers who are good enough, and Australia have three fast bowlers who all have over 200 wickets. Um, if you have bowlers who are good enough, then they'll find a way through um, uh, on these kind of surfaces. I, you know, again, they're hampered by injury. And, and maybe Boland wasn't the guy that they wanted here. Maybe they would have gone with Hazelwood and Stark. I don't know. I, I think they I think they would have picked Stark. I mean, I think the interesting question is, who do you leave out out of Murphy, Lyon and, and Kuhneman? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, Lyon might be the one, if you're, if you're looking at it from a horses for courses perspective, but yeah. then you're leaving out their their greatest off spinner of all time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's, that's, a, that's a huge call. It's a, it's a big seniority call to make there as well for potentially a debutant and a guy who might bolt sort of 10 overs per new ball. Um, yeah. So I mean, a, I, I would one. probably, I don't know. I would rather maybe keep, uh, maybe keep lying there and, you know, drop Murphy. Just again, that's a, like you said, it's a seniority call. <laughs> you keep the yeah, guy that he's played a hundred test matches and he has over 400 test wickets. Right. So you keep, uh, him I mean, there. I think my, overall take on it would be that's not where they'll lose the match i i I think i think probably that ashwin over is the is the 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 big big turning point where where yeah they had a a real shot to post 300 plus and yeah fair enough and actually they recover quite well to get 260 i think and and come in it is yeah that that, that, that's a fair call i just feel like teams do struggle in india to take 20 wickets not all, not all the time, but they take. I guess take twenty wickets cheap enough, and yeah, yeah. You know, maybe maybe three spinners is the way to go. But I just feel like Australia moving away from their traditional strengths sounds like a. It just feels a little bit like an overthinking to me. But you know, it's only the first day. So. Maybe to some extent. I mean, I, I, I think, I yeah, I. I th- they get. I mean, I think you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. If you're yeah, it's not, it's, like, it's not a black and white call. It's not a black and white call. They try and make and... a call in the first match with head, and then everyone slams them for it. And then exactly, the next match, yeah, yeah. they go for three spinners. <laughs> and I just always want to say in these things that you know, you and I are sitting here saying this. Those guys yeah. are out on the ground. They they and they've been playing that game for like years at a professional level, so they know what yeah. they're doing more more often than not. <laughs> We're just yeah. sitting here um, kind of throwing stuff at them. Just two more talking points then. First, um, just to touch upon Pajara, but playing his 100th test uh, today. Obviously, we love the guy on this podcast. We've had him on for an interview. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, he, he was fantastic. Love speaking to him. Um, what, what kind of, I mean, what, what's his legacy in, from an India point of view? It's, he's, it's probably not all time great, but he's, he certainly defined a generation or, or helped to define a generation for this fantastic India side, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He's been, I think he's been like a core, core member of, you know, probably all things considered the best test side in the world at the moment, pretty much. Yeah, if, I'd probably if, agree. If they're not yeah. definitely the best, you know, they're there in the conversation. And he's been an essential part of that for like 10 years now, just over 10 years. Um, and I think as much as like he's defined this test generation, I think he's also kind of countered the other growth of India as this kind of, you know, the, the place for white ball evolution and the place for uh, the IPL and the place for where you know, this kind of new style of cricket is, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's being pioneered there, but there, there's a lot of guys coming out from India now who are, you know, completely the opposite of what uh, Pujara has come up with. And so I think he's also stood, not defiance, in defiance, because I don't think it, it's that black and white, but I think he's also stood as a, as a kind of reminder of, uh, of a you know of, of a different game altogether and, di- and a different pathway into the into the structure and, and, a, and a different way of kind of making a living as a cricketer. I think uh, Karthik Karthik Krishna Swami wrote a really lovely tribute piece for us um, just the day before the Test match on his hundredth Test, and he said, you know, it, it's it's not just that he's um, he, he's he's like a countering force to all this, but he's actually in his own way he's he's a one off. Um, even if you go back to the traditions of like, you know, of de- solid defensive test batting, like, like Dravid and stuff, there are still things that Pujara does and has always done, which have stood him apart. You know, some of the shots that he plays, like the, the off drives that he plays, which are like really risky in a, in a strange way that you wouldn't expect an off drive. You know, you kind of punch off drives or whatever, but he plays them in a really used way. And I think he, he's actually been just a really unique kind of player. And... I, I don't say that we'll never see somebody like him again, because I think, you know, there, there, there's always going to be somebody who's going to come around who's completely different to what the prevailing kind of trend is in world cricket. But I think he's been absolutely essential. He's been through a, f- a couple of rough patches, you know, which I think just makes you a better better player ultimately. Um, and, you know, I, I think 
people might look at his record in in you know South Africa and England specifically and New Zealand maybe and say that oh you know he's he's kind of struggled but he's still been part of a very very successful side and he's been a he's been a core part uh, and there and there's not a batter out there who doesn't struggle in certain conditions um nah, yeah. and with the game he's had I think he's been it's, it's been phenomenal and you're right he's not probably going to be remembered as you know the all-time greats in India, Indian cricket, but that's also partly because the tradition of batting is so so rich in that country. That's it's some competition. <laughs> it's, um, it's, yeah, it's it's um, not being as good as Tendulkar is not uh, is not a it's not, it's not a crime. It's not a failing, <laughs> yeah, really, is it? Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, right to finish off, then let's have a quick look ahead to the rest of the test. Um, the, I, the, the 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 big talking point there will be the pitch. So far, I I, I think it's been relatively okay i mean yep. it's span and there's been a little bit of variable bounce but it's been quite slow um and, and slow spins you know traditionally speaking is not so much of a challenge versus yep. Yep. variable bounce and ball sliding on and uh and, and that kind of thing so i yeah i'm you know if you're if you're asking for a grade i don't think there's anything wrong with the pitch um it might it might dry out a little and become a bit more variable which again I don't, I don't think it's a problem. Where where do you see the game at the moment um, with India 240 behind? Um, I, I think they're probably fairly strong favourites, but Australia have hope. Yeah, I, I'd agree 100% with, with how you've put it. They, you know, they, they are strong favourites, but Australia would say that, you know, we've still put up some runs on that board. Um, and, the, and the pitch, I think... I think it was Hayden in the morning. Was it Hayden or Mandrake or one of them said that it feels like a day two pitch, and and that feels about yeah. right. That it was a little bit worn, but not like not really a fresh kind of you know day one pitch. I, I think that probably summed up correctly that it's it's that kind of pitch where there was turn, um, although you know like you said it, it kind of slowed, um, and, and the turn got less sharp. But that you know that may be the new ball, that may be a, an older ball coming into play. There was a bit of bounce early on, but it was those last two balls from from Nathan Lyon that really stayed very low. I mean, it's it's a harmless enough spot because I think it was just outside the right hander's leg stump. So you know, yeah. Rahul would kind of bat it away. But if there's areas like that, then you know it, it might not be easy. I think a lot of it will come down to um, what how Rohit goes tomorrow morning. You know, if he if he if he bats for any degree of time, then you would think that India would be in a shot of getting close to that total, if not surpassing it. The thing is, I think the thing for Australia is they've got to keep that. You know, if India are going to get a lead, they've got to keep that down into like real. We're looking at like you know ten, twenty kind of run lead because anything beyond that, then the pressure just amplifies. Yeah. And, you know, David Warner in the kind of form that he is, uh, and, and and Ashwin and Jadeja on maybe a third or fourth day pitch. It just becomes like that challenge just becomes a thousand times harder. So, yeah, like you say, I think India is still strong favorites, um, but I think, you know, not 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 so strong. So as Australia lose any hope in the match, you know, they've got runs, they've got 250 plus on the board. It's a start for sure. Right. Uh, well, that I think rounds off uh, this episode of the Cricket Podcast. We'll be back tomorrow. It'll be Mitt Ross and... I and we'll be talking a little bit about England as well. We've kind of ignored them. They're the the ugly stepsister of the the two. The two that's <laughs> you England right now. <laughs> that's uh, well. I mean, it is England are box office, but this is 100%. this is this is the series, isn't it? I mean, England, England, the England are playing at one in the morning for people. In the <laughs> it's not a World Test Championship either <laughs> for some weird it's reason. It's not a World Test Championship series. It's against uh, a New Zealand team with some injuries. Um, and, yeah, and going through a uh, transition. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, the Border Gavaska Trophy starts like at lunch. So it's... it's <laughs> um, <laughs> six runs and over against yeah. like three runs and over, if that. <laughs> um, on. Yeah, but it's captivating. I, I don't know. There's something There's something, There's something. good about um, about this the, the, this series. So we talked about that uh, and, and a bit more. Just a reminder that you can support the show on patreon um where you get access to extra shows we we did a special on the uh, comparison between steve smith and, and donald bradman on our last uh, exclusive um after that course some a conversation on, on youtube uh, and a dead conversation i'm sure and finally uh, the show is presented by manscaped precision engineer tools for your family jewels use the code cricket pod for 20 percent off and free shipping thanks osman uh, hopefully we'll have you again on the show it's been a pleasure Absolutely. talking to you um enjoy the rest of the match <laughs>